10 years after the Supreme Court ruling, congressional and organizational leaders are reflecting on the impact of Shelby County versus Holder. June 25th actually marked the 10th anniversary of that Supreme Court ruling, and many who opposed the decision argue that it gutted the Voting Rights Act of 1965. ABC 3340's Aaron Wise explains what the ruling did and how it has impacted voters. In 2013, the Supreme Court made a decision on Shelby County versus Holder, which rendered the preclearance portion of the Voting Rights Act unusable. In the wake of the 10th anniversary, a conference was held at the 16th Street Baptist Church to discuss the impact of the ruling. Enforceability of the, of the Voting Rights Act was two parts. It had something called preclearance, which would actually stop laws from going into effect prior to their enactment. Preclearance required certain jurisdictions that wanted changes to voting procedures to have those changes reviewed to ensure minority voters would not be negatively impacted. All of Alabama was included in the preclearance requirement. The high court's ruling said the formula used to pinpoint jurisdictions was unconstitutional. Preclearance hasn't been used since as a new formula is needed. We saw a flood after the Shelby decision, a flood of laws designed to do, make it hard just to show up at the polls, and you only get redress after the election is done. These are laws that on their face may seem benign, but the effect of it is to limit the power, the voting power of minorities. Congresswoman Terry Sewell is leading the effort to get the John Lewis Voting Rights Advancement Act passed. First, it would restore preclearance by Congress enacting a modern day formula to determine which states are the most egregious uh, violators of uh, black voter, minority voter participation and inclusion. Sewell intends to file the bill again in the next session of Congress. In Birmingham, Aaron Wise, ABC 3340 News. Now, those same panelists at the 16th Street Baptist Church celebrated the recent Supreme Court ruling in Allen v. Milliken, which requires now this state to redraw congressional districts in order to provide two majority-minority districts. A second public hearing on that matter is set for July 13th at the State House. Lawmakers must approve one of the maps during a special session. That special session is scheduled to begin July 17th.